try to feel that connection of the earth and lifting up through the crown of the head and letting that light radiate out through your body. And then with either your palms facing down or your palms facing up, just allow for your breath to become nice and even and steady. Once more, we have a lot going on in the world. And there always seems to be endless conflicts. But we can always remember that for ourselves, that we can only be responsible for ourselves, our own thoughts, our own words, and our own action choose to bring into the world. Now, something that I've really noticed, so just keep connecting to the breath, eyes open or closed, is as we become more inundated with endless streams of information and distraction, it becomes much more difficult for people to take the time to digest the material that they are receiving, but also to discern, to discern what they would like to allow into their experience or not. So one of the aspects of the yoga practice of just being able to be, to take time for yourself, for stillness, for quiet, for connection to the breath, to meditation, and to keep energy moving through the body is self-realization and your own self-awareness. And through that, you're able to, of course, as you integrate um, what you choose to bring into your experience uh, through your interactions in the world, you have the opportunity to be much more aware of what you're allowing in and also what you are giving out. So rather than just taking information in, feeling overwhelmed, being able to, again, digest that information, to integrate anything, to be discerning about what you're integrating, people begin to just become uh, so exhausted. And I notice as well, they start to fall into whatever key messaging is being delivered to them. And so it becomes this state of, just going along with whatever that key messaging is that you are um, being inundated with without being able to discern for yourself is in alignment with your own beliefs and values and why. So just as you're sitting here and allowing for the breath, I'd like you just to feel a sense of settling and almost a, a, a void so that you can just let yourself be open. And through that feeling of being connected to yourself and this void and this light to open yourself to being aware of what comes up for you. So almost as though there is a movie screen and whatever through the practice starts to come up as pictures in the void or as images of um, or dialogue or anything that starts to be projected onto this screen to just be aware of it and to look at it without any attachment to it. So we'll stay here for four more breaths.
And then bring your hands together at your heart center. Taking a moment as always to acknowledge yourself. And then take a deep inhale through your nose. And a long exhale out your mouth. And then bring your arms forward in front of you. So take your thumbs, draw them in towards your palms, and then wrap your fingers around. We're just gonna do wrist rolls here. So going in one direction, and then just going in the opposite direction. And then flex your hands and draw your arms out to the side. Now, as you draw your arms out to the side, try to keep pushing out through the heels of your hands, fingers pointing upwards, and then begin to make little shoulder rolls here. So you can go in one direction, and then just go in the other. Good, and then bring your arms back, bring your palms down, then bring your palms to face each other and draw your arms up. We're gonna take the right hand down the back, left hand to the right elbow, and come into a side lateral stretch. So start to root down through your right hip. And as you keep drawing over to the left, really feel that lengthening in the side body. Good, now come back to center. Draw the right arm underneath the left, coming into your eagle arms. And in eagle arms, always be thinking of keeping the elbows drawn up to the height of the shoulders, drawing the wrists away, and then intentionally bring the shoulders down. And it's that bringing the shoulders down when you're really gonna feel that nice stretch between the shoulder blades. Good, now release your arms, bring your arms back out. Draw your arms up and again, again heels and ass out. This time though, I want you to let the shoulders relax even more and start to draw your arms back towards the back of your body here. But without letting one arm drop or without letting the fingers start to come down. And, and just breathe into the stretch here. Continue to push out through the heels of the hands. Good, now come back again to center. Again, palms to face each other. Draw again your arms up. Take now your left hand, right hand to your left elbow, and then starting to go now over to the right and rooting down through the left hip. Good, now come back to center. Same thing, but other side. So taking the opposite arm underneath, bringing the elbows up, shoulders down, drawing the wrists slightly away from the face and breathing into the upper back. So the more you draw the shoulder blades away from each other and the shoulders down, the more intense this stretch will be. Good, and then release and bring again your arms up. Once more, bring your hands in front of you here. And then from this place, we're gonna do the shoulder flossing. So we're gonna do four and four. So on your inhale, you're gonna draw your arms up, let your shoulders relax, bring your arms out to the side, roll so that the back of your hands are facing forward, and then draw your arms down. And then the next inhale, the same, drawing the arms up and bringing the arms forward. And we'll repeat this three times. So inhaling, bringing the arms up, letting the shoulders relax down, bringing the arms up, and then back hands and down. And just try to synchronize the breath with the movement. The inhale is the lift, and the exhale as you bring your arms forward. And again, inhale, shoulders down, bring the arms out, rotate and down. Inhale, draw the arms up, and exhale, and last one. Good, now for this one, we're gonna draw the arms up. Try to always imagine that you've got a strap. And so with this strap, you wanna make sure that you don't bend the elbows to try to get your arms back. You wanna keep your arms straight and then palms are facing forward. 
And as you bring your arms back, try to imagine again with the strap as though you're trying to bring the strap up and over your head and then bring in the arms forward. So again, three more. And listen to your breath as you do this. Good, and one more. And try to keep the arms straight. Good, now from here, we're gonna again, bring the arms out, the hands, and then once more, start to do little shoulder rolls here. And then go in the other direction. Good, now draw your arms up. Take again your right hand down your back. This time though, we're gonna take the left arm, bring it to the back of the hand, and then come to our cow face pose arms. So just stay lifted up through the crown of the head always. Keep the chin parallel to the floor. And notice this tendency to wanna to push the chest forward or to round the back. So try to maintain an upright spine. Good, now we're going to release. Take now the left arm, cross it over. Let the left shoulder relax down. And now take the right hand to the left knee and come into a twist. So when you're here, try to bend the elbow. That's gonna allow you to twist just a little deeper. And then come back to center. And now from here, draw your arms back up and same thing, other side. So left arm's gonna come down, right hand's gonna come to meet the left. Try to always think elbow up, elbow down. And then just breathing into the stretch for the right shoulder. Good, now release. Again, just cross your arm, let the shoulder relax. And take now the left hand to the right knee and start to rotate your twist. Okay, now come back to center. From here, we're gonna come into our child's pose. So just roll forward, bring your knees wide, extend your arms out. Just let your forehead come down to the mat. Try to always keep a little bit of space so that rather than pressing the face down onto the mat, it's just the forehead so that you have a lot of space to breathe and you can keep pulling your heels away from each other. So that pulling the heels is just always gonna give you more space in the low back. So especially if your low back is tight, keep that in mind because it's quite key. Okay, now come up onto your fingertips, start to walk your hands over to the right. You can take your left hand over top of your right and again, just back to a side lateral stretch. So draw the left hip crease back as much as you comfortably can. Okay, and then same thing, just go over the other direction. Okay, come back to center, walk your hands towards you. And now we're just gonna shift our weight and come into saddle pose. So always remember in saddle pose, if you have any issues with the knees, you can lift the hips and that's gonna release that. You can come up even higher if that feels preferable. Or of course you can come down further. When you come down onto your forearms, it's actually quite relaxing to be in this position. If you wanna come down all the way, of course, then you come down all the way as well. And if you come down all the way, you can always interlace your fingers behind your head. Just let your elbows come out to the side. Whichever you choose, try to keep the muscles of the face just soft and relaxed. Let your breath move into the stretch for the quads here. 
And we'll stay for four more breaths. So just keep the breath nice and steady and even exactly as you did at the very beginning. And just noticing, as I mentioned, just what comes up. So if you close your eyes while you're in a pose, you're able to notice more of the specific energetic quality of an asana. But also you'll start to notice what comes up into the mind, not just as thoughts or internal dialogue, but even pictures. Okay, now on your fourth breath, you can start to guide yourself up, bring your knees in towards each other. And then from here, we're just gonna step the right foot forward. Okay, so bring the arms up, bring your hands together, your heart come into a twist. So rotate the torso, take the left elbow to the outside, and then just draw your right shoulder back. So you might feel for yourself, oh, this feels quite easy. Then just lift the push out through the heel, and then keep rolling the shoulder back. And just continue to do so. Just keep, keep, keep drawing this right shoulder back. Excellent. Now just bring your knee down, come back to center, reach your arms up. Your toes, of course, can be tucked or untucked. And then interlace your fingers, let your head fall into your palms, lift your heart, and breathing here in Anjami Asana. So just let the knee draw forward. The more your left quad moves towards the mat, then of course, the more you're gonna feel that in the hip flexor. Okay. And then just pull your hip back, bring your arms up, and then frame your foot. Now as you frame your foot, you can take your back knee, just draw it slightly back, and then start to lift your right foot, and you're gonna breathe into the stretch here for the back of your leg. So it could be that for yourself, maybe, your hamstrings are quite tight and you prefer to have a bend in the knee. But if the leg feels comfortable to have straight, then just keep pushing out through the heel and always feel this sense of pulling back through the right hip crease. And then just pull your foot towards you. Step your back foot to meet your front. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And we're gonna come right into chair. So we're reaching the arms up, let the shoulders relax. And then just sit into it and just see if you can soften where you might be holding. Do you start to clench your jaw? Do you start to tighten in the hands? Maybe the forehead, the muscles of the forehead start to get tight and tense. Okay. And then just push into your feet and bring your hands together at your heart. Okay. Draw your arms beside you. We're going to come back into a side lateral stretch. Taking the left hand down, reaching the right arm, and then bringing more weight to the edge of your right foot. And just keep reaching, reaching, reaching through your fingers here. Okay, and then bring yourself back up. Same thing, other side. So reaching your hand down your leg, extending out through your fingers. And then bring yourself back. Hands together at your heart, and you're going to come into tree. So taking your heel, drawing your foot up, placing your foot to the inside of your leg. And then either keeping your hands at your heart center, or of course, draw the arms up and breathe here. Okay, on your next breath, cross your right arm. We're gonna come into our eagle. So just tuck the toes. Start to sit into it. Keep the elbows drawn up, shoulders drawn down. And breathe in here. Good. Now press into your foot. Release. Inhale. Draw your arms up. Exhale. Fold. Bring your hand down and step back with your left foot. You're going to bring your knee down. Bring your hands to the inside. And then just draw your foot over to the side and let your knee fall out. As you let your knee fall out, you can take your left hand, bring it a little further into the mat, and then just bend the left knee. And then taking your hand to the top of your foot, roll the shoulder and start to bring your heel towards your buttock.
And of course, if you prefer to come down onto your forearm, you can. Okay, now you're gonna release. And as you release, bring your left foot over to the right side of your mat, bring your weight back, cross your right leg over. And now we're gonna come into full cow face pose. So you can either here maintain again an upright position, or you can start to fold in. As you're folding in though, watch that the sit bones don't start to lift up away from the mat. Try to still keep that feeling of being rooted down so that both sit bones stay connected. Then you can start to bring the chin over top of the knee and just breathe again into the stretch for the left shoulder on this side. Good. Now use your next inhale to come back up. Take again the left arm once more. Just cross it over. Let the left shoulder relax down. And then bring your hands behind you. And from here, we're going to come into Navasana. So extending your arms, start to lift the legs. Reach through the fingertips. Bring the shoulder blades towards each other. Just stay with your breath. And then right ankle is going to cross over. You're going to come forward again onto your hands and knees. And then from here, just step again, your left foot forward, toes tucked or not, reaching your arms up, taking your hands to your heart, and then starting to rotate and taking your right elbow to the outside of your left knee and coming into your twist. And then again, lifting the back knee if you'd like to. Just keep that feeling of rolling the shoulder back. Good. Now bring the knee down. Come back to center. Again, toes tucked or untucked. Reaching the arms up. Interlace the fingers. Let your head fall into your palms. Keep drawing the elbows out to the side. Lift the heart. Or breathe here. But on your next breath, bring your hands down. And then from here again, you can draw your knee slightly back and start to lift your foot. You can keep your knee bent or of course you can guide your leg or straight leg or not. And then just breathe here and keep drawing the back through the left hip crease. If you prefer to have your toes untucked and you feel stable, then do so. Just as always, lead with the heart. So try to always find that feeling of having a little more length. And then pull your heel towards you. And then step your back foot again to meet your front. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And coming into your second chair. So reaching in the arms up, keeping the weight back into the heels. Extending out through the fingertips. Good, a little deeper, sit just touch more into it. And then again, just press into your feet, bring your hands together at your heart. And we're gonna come right into our tree on the left side. So taking the left foot, guide it in, hands at the heart, reaching up, and choosing, of course, your variation for the arms. And then from here, it'll be the left arm coming under. So in your eagle arms, just remember the arm that's underneath has the leg that's over top. And then sitting into your eagle. Keep always, though, the shoulders down, the elbows up. So watch that the elbows don't start to move down towards the chest. Keep pulling in towards the midline of the body. And then just release. And again, inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold. Bring your hands down, get back with the opposite foot. Bring the knee down, let your knee come slightly out to the side. And with your palm or your forearm, roll the shoulder, 
And then take again your hand and just start to bring your heel towards your buttock. Good, now release. And again, once you release, now you're gonna bring your foot over to the other side, cross over, left leg, bring the left arm up, bring your fingers towards each other to meet. And then same, you're gonna to start to fold if you did so on the other side. And just again, stay rooted down through the sit bones. And you can let your chin start to move over your knee. And then slowly bring yourself again back up. Draw the right arm. Let your shoulder relax down. And then coming into your Navasana once more. So bring again your hands behind you. And then just lifting the legs. Reaching out through the fingers. And keeping the shoulder blades drawn in towards each other. You can bring your gaze to look at your big toes. And then this time, it's going to be the left ankle that's going to cross. Just pull your heels again in towards you and come onto your hands and knees. So now on your hands and knees, we're going to move through six cat cow, toes tucked or untucked. And just let the heart draw forward. Good, one more here. Just pull the heart forward. And then once you come to your neutral position, just now take your right foot to the outside. So now we're gonna come down into our lizard pose. And the same as you did with your twist, you come down onto your forearms, you can lift the knee. If you don't feel comfortable on your forearms, you can just lift the knee again, exactly as you did in your twist. If you don't wanna have the knee lifted, just bring it down. You're going to get the same stretch into the hip. The knee lifted is just for strength. So if you want to focus more on flexibility, be on your forearms. You can come down and then breathing here. So if you want to again include the strength, then lift the knee and breathe here. Good, stay for another breath. And then just bring the knee down. Come on to your palms. And then we're just gonna step forward into, so as you come down, bringing your thumbs towards your sternum, lifting the heart, bringing the fingertips to touch, drawing the knees away. And just let yourself settle, just settle into the position. Noticing if you feel total ease now in Malasana Garland Pose or whether it still feels a little challenging, maybe the heels are still staying lifted up away from the mat. Just notice. And then from here, bring your feet to face forward. Again, we're going to inhale, lift and lengthen. Bend the knees low, come all the way up to standing right away and then bring your hands together at your heart and draw your right knee up. So now from here, we're going to come into our Virabhadrasana 3. So warrior 3, just start to fold, push out through your heel. And then use the bend of the left knee to guide yourself up. Reach your arms up and Virabhadrasana 2. So in your Virabhadrasana 2, we're going to move here with the breath. So as you inhale, lifting the legs. And then exhale, sitting back into it. And then again, just lifting up, drawing the arms up, straightening the leg, and then sitting into it. And two more, just reach up. 
and again. And last one. And again, and then holding for four breaths. So here, try to avoid this tendency to want to rotate the torso. The torso is facing towards the long edge of the mat. It's just the turn of the head. It's the gaze over the third finger. And one more breath. Okay, now straighten your leg. Bring your toes in towards each other. Bring the heels in towards each other. We're going to sit into our goddess. So as you sit down, you can always rock slightly from side to side. See so if you can get a little deeper into it. Then try to draw the knees away, hands at the heart, or come into your cactus arms. So keeping the shoulders again relaxed and down and sitting here for four breaths. So just listen for the sound of your own breath. Notice that the breath still just feels nice and even and steady exactly, again, like in your seated position. And one more breath. And then just press into your feet, bring again your hands to your hips. Take your back foot now, though, bring it to a 45 degree angle. Bring your other foot slightly out, bend into your knees, and draw your arms up, your Virabhadrasana one. So from here, we're gonna take the arms behind, bring either your knuckles towards each other, the edge of your hands or reverse prayer. And then just lift the heart, keep the bend of the front knee, continue to press down through the back edge of your back foot. Good, and breathing here. Last breath. Okay. And then just come up onto your toes. Bring your knee down. Take your hands now over to the right side. And now we're going to come into lizard on this side. So from here, you can again either be thinking palms, being with your knee lifted, and coming down onto your forearms and having the knee lifted. Good. And then from here, you can bring your knee down, come back to center, and return again to Malasana and sit into it. So this time we will take the right arm, just press it against the leg, reach the left arm up. You can always, of course, take your hand again, cradle the back of the head, draw the left elbow a little further back and breathe here. And then just same thing, other side, if you are choosing to do so. Good, and then again, come back to center. Bring your feet forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And then just bend your knees. Bring again yourself all the way up to standing and hands again together at your heart. Okay, drawing now the left knee up, coming into your rear address so you're on this side. So just keep that bend in your knee, and as you're pushing out, this knee can stay bent always. Then as you continue to push out, now you can start to straighten your right leg. Okay, from here, you're gonna bend the knee, draw the arms up, let the shoulders relax, and now Virabhadrasana two on this side. So again, moving with the breath here, inhale, draw the arms up, Exhale, sit into it. Inhale, bring your arms up. Exhale, sit into it. Inhale, draw your arms up. Exhale, sit in. Last one, inhale, bring your arms up. And exhale, sit into it. And then again, try to have the torso facing towards the long edge of the mat. We're breathing here for four breaths. Keep the shoulders relaxed and down. Keep bending into your front knee. Shoulders right over your hips. Last breath. Good. And then straighten your leg. Again, bring your hands to your hips. 
Draw your toes in towards each other. Bring your heels. And then again, you can just rock from side to side. And then drawing the knees away, bring the hands to the heart, staying lifted up through the crown of the head. And breathe in here for four breaths, or again, bring the arms out in cactus. Good, now press again into your feet, bring your hands once more to your hips. Draw now the opposite foot. So now you're gonna have your left foot at a 45 degree angle, bend into your right knee and coming into a game, either the knuckles or the edge of the hands or the palms for reverse prayer in Veer Vajrasana 1. So keeping the heart lifted. And keep that bend in the front knee, keep pressing down through the outer edge of the back foot. Keep pushing the heels of your hands together. And then from here, release, bring your arms up, hands get together to your heart, come onto your toes, and once more, bring your knee down. This time though, you're gonna take your right foot, just scooch it over to the side, bring your knee down, bring your hands to your low back, and we're gonna come into our camel pose. So drawing the hips forward, you can have your fingers pointing upwards. That gives a little more of a lift for the heart. And then you can take your hands to your ankles, keep the hips drawn forward, let the head relax back for a breath. Good, use your inhale to bring yourself up. Come down, keep your knees together, fold forward, have the back of your hands on the mat. Now draw your wrist back, interlace your fingers, bring your shoulder blades towards each other, and start to draw your arms up away from your low back. Keep reaching the wrists up. Good. Now slowly guide yourself back up. Bring your hands beside you. Come onto the soles of your feet and ragdoll up to standing. Okay. Bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Take a deep inhale. And then exhale. Let your shoulders relax. Once more, bring your knee up to the height of your hip. Flex your foot. Left hand's going to come to the outside. You're going to roll your shoulder back. Arm's going to either face back, or you're going to take your hand to the edge of your foot and start to push out through the heel. And then just stay lifted again up through the crown of the head. Now just bend your knee. Come here into your standing pigeon prep, and then start to fold in. And as you're folding in, continue to press your foot against your bicep. Breathe into the stretch here for your hip. Okay, now you're going to bring your hands down towards the floor, but release your foot. Take now your hands and just slip your fingers underneath your feet or the sole of your feet to come right over your palms. And then just start to fold in and keep drawing the crown of your head towards the floor. You can bring your elbows out to the side. A little bend in the elbows is gonna allow your torso to get closer towards your thighs. And keep drawing up through the sit bones. Good, now release your hands. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And then just again, bend the knees, bring yourself all the way up to standing. Hands again together at the heart. And now we'll do the other side. So again, lifting the knee, taking the hand to the knee, hand to the hip, taking your hand to the foot, drawing your arm back, and lift it up again through the crown of the head. And then coming back to center, cross over, start to sit into your pigeon prep. 
and then bringing again just your foot to your bicep. The more we bring back into your heel exact pose, the deeper the stretch is going to be for the outer left hip. And then just stay with it. Good. Now bring your hands down. Same thing, just uncross. This time, though, take your first two fingers around your big toes, bring your elbows out to the side, and start to, again, just draw the sit bones upwards. Good. Now start to sit down. Now, as you sit down, you're going to need to take your arms to the inside of your legs in order to come into your Bhattakanasana with your fingers around your big toes. So try to always feel that sense of leading forward from the heart and then folding in. Now slowly come up, bring your knees in towards each other, bring your arms now to the outside and start to extend out through your big toes. Breathe in here. Good. Now just bend the knees, guide your legs towards you, take your left leg, bring it out, cross your right leg over, either keeping the left leg or bringing the heel in, and then just coming into a twist again. So drawing the right shoulder back, breathing here. And then back to center, same thing, other side, just a counter twist. Good. And then come back, bring now the opposite leg out. And then from here again, rotating the torso. Try to make sure that both of the sit bones stay connected to the mat as you're twisting. There is a tendency to let the hip on the side that you're twisting lift away. So keep that again, sit bone down. And then coming back, a counter twist. Good. And then as you come back to center here again, Bring your hands just beside you. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And then keep your knees and your feet together and come into your chair, bringing your arms up, palms touching. And you can bring your gaze to look at your thumbs or you can bring your gaze forward. And, and then use your inhale to bring your hands to your heart. A draw again your right knee up. This time we're gonna come into Tita Hasta Padangustasana. So you're gonna root down through the left hip, take your first two fingers around your big toe, press out through the heel, rotate, and bring your leg out to the side. Good, now come back to center, bend the knee, release, same thing other side, draw the opposite leg, reach up, get a little close to here, reach up, Press out through the heel, rotate again, and lift. Now you can always, of course, bring your arm out as well. And you can point your toe if you want a bit more of a stretch. Otherwise, keep the foot flexed. Come again back to center, bend the knee, and release. Take now your feet wide. We're going to come back down into our malasana. But I want you to bring your hands forward. And now bring your heels towards each other. Lift the heels away from the mat and breathe in here. Good, now bring your knees in, bring your knees down. Come on to first your palms and then come on to your forearms. Walk your feet back and four breaths here.
Good. Now come down onto your knees and release into your sphinx. Into your seal. Keep the shoulders relaxed and down. And then exhale, come down. Take your forearms, just stack your forearms and let your forehead rest and just let the feet fall away from each other. Good, now come back up. Come again onto your forearms. We're gonna come into our half frog. So just bend the knee, take the hand to the foot, start to guide the elbow to point up and then just push the heel of your left hand into the mat. And then exhale, release. Same thing, other side. Taking the hand and then pushing the heel of your right hand. Good. And then slowly come down. Bring your hands beside you and come into your child's pose. Keep your arms extended out in front of you. Now we're going to bring the thumbs just to the nape of the neck. Let the shoulders relax down. Good. And now bring again your arms out. Pull yourself forward onto your belly. And then from here, we're going to move through four Bhujangasana. So just bring your shoulder blades down your back, lifting the heart. Exhale, come down. Inhale, come back up. Let the shoulders relax down. Exhale. Two more. Lift the heart. Keep the fingers nice and light. Exhale, come down. And then again. Good. And then tuck the toes. Hips to heels, keep your toes tucked here. Let your forehead just come down again onto the mat. And then start to walk your hands once more towards you. Come onto the soles of your feet and slowly again, make your way up. Now you bring your shoulders up towards your ears. Take a deep inhale, exhale out your mouth. Bring your arms up, sit again into your chair. Keep the knees together, hands at the heart. Start to sit a little deeper and then coming into your twisted chair. So as you're here, try to keep the knees flush. Continue to roll the right shoulder back. Bring the thumbs towards the sternum. And one more breath. Come back to center. Bring your hands down. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And then again, just slowly roll up. Bring again your shoulders up towards your ears. Take a deep inhale and then exhale. Again, draw your arms up. Bring your hands to your heart. Sit into your chair. And now same thing, but other side. So as you're here, just always try to make sure that the knees do stay flush. Keep rotating the torso. Continue to draw the thumbs towards the sternum. Good. And then come back to center. Bring your hands down. This time, though, fold in. Now, you can have your hands around your ankles. You can bring your arms, draw them behind the legs, but try to draw up through the sit bones. Folding in. Okay. Now bring your hands forward in front of you. Bring your feet wide and again, come into Malasana. So take again your hands to your heart, bring your fingertips to touch, draw the knees just a little further away from each other. And then bring your hands though this time behind you, draw the left leg out, cross again the right leg over, but now we're gonna draw back at the hips and fold in. And as you're doing this, keep bringing the left hip crease back.
Good. Now come up. Release. Same thing, other side. Taking now the right leg, crossing it over. Draw back at the hip crease. Hold in. Good, now come up, bring the leg out, scoot yourself up, and come onto your back. You know, once you come onto your back, you can extend the left leg, bring your right knee in towards you, interlace your fingers, guide your leg up, and then as you're here, you can keep walking your hand up your leg. If you'd like, you can again take your first two fingers around your big toe, just draw your leg a little closer towards you and breathe in here. If you'd like to lift your head, you can bring your nose towards your knee. And then bend the knee. If you have your fingers around your big toe, just release and cross the knee over the body, but keep the right shoulder rooted down. Good. Come back to center. Hug your knee in towards your chest. Bring your foot down. Take another left foot, and we're going to come into bridge. So bring your hands beside you. You start to lift the hips down. Bring your shoulder blades closer towards each other. And then as you're here, try to draw the heart towards your chin and just keep lifting, lifting, lifting the hips. And then slowly release, bring your spine down, take your leg out, bring your knee in towards your chest again, interlace the fingers, bring the leg up, or again, take your first two fingers around your big toe. And then just continue to slowly and gently bring your left leg towards you. And once more, if you'd like to bring your nose towards your knee, you can do so. And then bend the knee. Take now the right hand, cross it over. Keep the left shoulder rooted down so that, as always, you have that beautiful spinal twist. Good, and then come back to center, hug your knee in towards your chest and bring your left foot down. Now this time though, you're gonna come over onto your right side. So just as though you're gonna be sleeping on your side, but you're gonna use your left hand and now take your right arm and slide it behind you. Try to have your hand only at the height of your shoulder in its deepest expression. So watch that it doesn't go up any higher and then draw the arm up and take now your left hand, just slip it underneath and let the left shoulder roll back. And you'll get a beautiful stretch into the right shoulder here. And if you find that it's a little uncomfortable for your neck, don't hesitate to place a little blanket or a cushion if you have one and give your neck, your head a bit of support. Otherwise, just relax into it. Keep letting the left shoulder roll back. That's going to increase the stretch. And then take the left hand. Use that to help guide you. Draw over onto your side. Bring both of your knees in towards your chest. Make little circles here. And then going in the other direction. And then coming over onto your left side. So again, think here you're using your arm behind you. And then from there, letting the arm come up, sliding it underneath, and rolling the right shoulder back.
Good, and then same thing. Just slowly make your way back onto your back and bring both of your knees in towards your chest. Okay, now coming into a thread the needle. So just take your left thigh, draw towards you. Use your right elbow to guide the knee away. And as always, if you find that that's quite comfortable for you and you want to just have a bit of a deeper stretch into the hip, just wrap your arms around your leg and interlace your fingers, start to guide your right foot further up towards your left shoulder. And you'll definitely be feeling this into your hip and your glutes. So just stay with it. And then whether you are in your thread the needle or in this variation, just take your right hand to the edge of your right foot and start to push up through your foot and then guide the knee down towards the floor. And now same thing, other side. So just release, take now the opposite. Again, you're either gonna be here in a thread the needle position or you're gonna take your foot into the inner crease and release the leg and then breathe here. And then again, just take your hand to the edge of your foot. You're in a half happy baby, draw the knee down towards the floor. Keep pushing your foot into your hand. Use the strength of your arm to guide the knee a little closer towards your mat. And then bend the knee and release the leg. Okay. Now from here, you're gonna start to draw your legs over to the right and then just extend your arms over to the right. And you're gonna feel a nice side lateral stretch. Once more, just breathing from the edge of your left foot all the way along your side body and out through your right hand. So try to feel with your right hand to your left wrist as though you're just pulling the left wrist a little further and then come back to center and it's going to be the same thing the other side. So just starting to walk your feet over, walk your hands over, use your left hand to your right wrist to just breathe a bit deeper into the stretch to find a little more length. And then come back again to the center. Bring your feet to the mat, hug your knees in towards your chest, and rock yourself up. Now, once you come up, you can come to a seated position. From here, we're gonna draw the right arm up, rotate the torso and get into the back. So feel here as though you're being pulled with the wrist. And just keep, keep, keep reaching. Good, and then bring yourself up. The same thing, just rotate the torso and reach. Good, and then come back up, bring both of your arms behind you and come onto your forearms. Now, once you come onto your forearms, you're just gonna make little ankle rolls here. So just going in one direction and then going in the other direction. And then again, bringing yourself back up to a seated position. Now from here, you can either just fold forward in Sukhasana, in Siddhasana, or if you're comfortable in a half lotus position or a full lotus position and you feel okay to come into the bind, then you can do so. So just folding forward, taking your first two fingers around your big toe, taking your other hand, taking your first two fingers around your big toe, and then folding in. So just as long as you're folding at the hip crease, just feel a sense of surrender. Let your forehead come down towards your mat. And slowly release, bring yourself back up, draw your arms up, 
Bring your hands together at your heart. Take a deep inhale through your nose. And a long exhale out your mouth. And now bring your hands onto your knees. Draw your chin down towards your chest, right ear towards your right shoulder. And then start to go in the other direction, letting the right shoulder relax down. And then just gonna go back and forth three more times each side. And as you draw your chin over, let the shoulder relax though. So just notice that the shoulder starts to come up towards. And once more on each side. And then bring your head back to a neutral position. Bring your gaze over your right shoulder. Bring your gaze over your left. Come back to center. Bring again your shoulders up towards your ears. Take a deep inhale. And exhale. So now we're going to do our Nadi Shodana. We'll do eight rounds. And then we'll do a meditation uh, before we come into Shavasana. So bringing your thumb and your index finger to touch, drawing your other three fingers in. And as I've mentioned before, if you'd like, you can bring your attention to your third eye, regardless of whether you have your fingers there or not. The belief being a little bit of gentle pressure helps to activate your third eye. And you may have found that sometimes you'll start to get a little bit of a, a pulse right there at the third eye. Sometimes you can also feel like there's like little pins, like you just almost feel as though if there was little pin pricks this way. Another thing that you might start to notice in your practice is this feeling here at the crown of your head, almost like it's just starting to open, like you could feel the energy move around the crown of your head, or just like those little pin pricks right between your uh, eyebrows at your third eye, you might start to feel that at the top of your head. It's almost like, like little pin pricks or almost like if a gentle rain was touching on the top of your head. So if you're starting to notice things like that, uh, just let them be. If you bring your attention too much to them, they'll actually begin to dissipate. So just try to let that be, and you know, think of it as almost, uh, I call them cosmic showers. It's like a download. You're just letting a new, a new update in kind of your, your software uh, take place. Okay, so it's nice to be thinking of it the same as a computer. There's constant updates. We're doing that ourselves, we don't realize, but we have um, kind of collective uh, updates, right? So if we're open to it, if we allow for that update to occur, then we're updating our own kind of, uh, level of consciousness, so our software. If we don't, that's fine. It's like putting on the computer, you know, or having it updated later. It's, the update will be there, it's not going anywhere. It's part of the collective consciousness, it's there. but. You know, when you're ready, you can allow that to happen or you can choose to have it for another time. So bringing your fingers in towards your palm. We'll do one more cleansing breath, inhaling through the nose. And then exhaling out the mouth. And then bringing your thumb to your right nostril and inhaling through your left. And then closing the left, exhaling out the right. Inhaling through the right. Close at the right and exhaling out the left. And now just continue your pace seven more rounds. Be sure to count though, each time you exhale out the left nostril because it's very, very easy to lose track of where you are in the pranayama if you don't count that exhale.
And then once you come to the eighth one, releasing the mudras, letting your hands rest on your knees. And then taking your right hand over top of your left and bring your thumbs to meet. So we've been doing three minute meditation thus far. So today we're gonna to do a four minute meditation and just gradually increase. So just let your shoulders relax down. Again, try to keep your chin always parallel to the floor. So notice that tendency to want to let the chin drop or the head to fall back too. So just keep that length in the spine neutral position. If your mind ever starts to wander, just remember you have that mantra so hum. It's always available to you. It's there. You can repeat it mentally in your mind or you can repeat it to yourself out loud. So on the inhale, um, on the exhale. And notice if you feel distracted, be that by your own thoughts or perhaps sounds or movement around you. And just acknowledge it. You don't have to change anything. Just acknowledge it. And then come back to finding that stillness within. So you think of it much like if you're with a young child or even you're with a little puppy and you keep being distracted and you're trying to walk a path and they smell something over here, they see something over here, and they hear something over here and they want to engage with that. Think of your mind as wanting to do that too. Okay? You gently guide back to the path without berating, or judging or shaming or any of those negative low vibrations, but just Guiding gently back, coming back onto your path. And then if you start to notice that your mind is wandering and you're thinking about different things that you continue to do or haven't done or past memories or future goals, whatever it might be. Same, just acknowledge it and then just come back to the moment. Just into quiet and stillness. To the sense of presence. might notice there's a pattern to what you think. Again, just remain here, try to keep the spine upright. And then one more deep inhale. And then exhale out the mouth. And gently opening your eyes. 
And slowly making your way onto your back and into Shavasana. This is you come down, and bring your palms to face up, let your feet flop open. Allow for this stillness, this peace, the integration again of what we have done in the practice today. And then as you move through your day and the week ahead, as I mentioned at the very beginning, just notice all that comes at you and how discerning you can be on what you engage energetically with. And if you feel that it doesn't serve your highest good and that of humanity to engage with that energy, then take a deep breath, exhale, and redirect your attention and energy to that which will. The light within me honors the light within each of you. Thank you always for being here. I really am excited so much for next week's practice and being able to, again, see each of your beautiful faces. Namaste.